series. So anyways, look after your goalies, encourage them, acknowledge them. Uh, I know it's easy to criticize them, but you guys need to work with them. The next speaker, if you guys want a pee break, I, got, I know we get some older coaches here that have to pee frequently there. Dave? Okay. Yeah, I gotta go. Here we go. Uh, we get ready to sell them, we get a break after this. Next presenter, I had the great pleasure of coaching, so I've been around a long time. Uh, she coaches sales with Executive Bleu, and he was certainly a, a great pleasure to coach. A cerebral, intelligent hockey player. I probably don't play him. I'm sure there's games I play about 45 minutes. You could put him in any situation. Great team player, calm, quiet, and I think that translates into his coaching style as well. So uh, let's walk up the adults. I know it's a good sales bull Thank you very much. Uh, the first thing, as you heard when Dave was speaking, uh, I had the man flu for the past couple of days, so <clears throat> my voice is a little itchy and I'll, I'll talk a little bit. As for goalies, I know Dave just left and I know Jeff is a goalie. He said it right. Goalies are mental, or a lot of mental. Uh, mental yeah. I always tell them to work up on the ice, stop it. I guess I'm not supposed to say that, but as Charlie said, show me a good goaltender, and I'll show you a good coach. And it goes the other way, so <coughs> make sure they're happy. Uh, I don't talk to my goalies a whole lot. I uh, let Louis Gilles, Louis Gilles, my goalie coach at the Blue Eagles. So for me, uh, I will be one of the coaches of the Vipers. Uh, the whole team, so it's something new that I'll have to start doing with the, the kids and stuff. Uh, so <coughs> I won't have the luxury to have my goal coach there. Uh, so let's get started. As you see, this is me. <coughs> I'm a graduate. Uh, very two beautiful kids. I'll go quickly that, after that. Uh, Renan uh, gave me a little bit of what he was looking for really that big to what uh, I should be speaking with is it the practice or the game and as I'm sitting here I start seeing people coming in and there's a lot of hockey people that know what they're doing have played the game so I'm starting to get a little bit nervous to see if uh, <coughs> see if, if what I did is, is, is complicated enough or is, is not too simple but as we've said sometimes simple is the best way effective practice for me, it's time is precious. When you're on the ice, you gotta be prepared. You gotta be organized. You gotta make sure <coughs> that you do the things right. And the worst thing you can do is you get to a rink and you see 18 people in the line and only one shooter. That's because you know the coach didn't do his job, he didn't do what he was, he was meant to do, and that was be prepared and organized. Uh, <coughs> Kids are so lucky now. We talked about that the other, this weekend. We used to play in ponds. We used to play uh, outdoors. Now they have the rinks. But when they're there, we have to make sure you signed up to be a coach in this program. You make sure you're ready. You do the job so the kids have <coughs> the experience and the time that they should have. <coughs> Three fundamental keys to learning. State, illustrate, and apply. No, not what that I mean. If I say earth, I want you to back check through the dots and to the house. That's state. That's what I want the kids to do. Now you know me. <coughs> and I know the novice kids. If I say that, there's one or two that's going to say, yeah. There's two or three that are going to be sticking each other with the sticks. And there's another couple that are saying, what's a house? <laughs> where's, where's the house? <coughs> so, second illustrator. Here, so, so, just, there's no, one. Yeah. so illustrate. Take the board. Easy is done. You say I want you to back check through these dots here, and you stop at the house. This is the house. This is what I want. This is where you go. <coughs> so you, you're, you're 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 making the other players that are watching now see. Oh, what is he doing? Okay, dots. Up. So you got three two thirds of them, I guess. Now you have to apply. You have to find the drill that you're going to use that they're going to bring these kids to do what you want them to do. <coughs> so this is how those kids are going to learn. So you have to be, again, smart. You have to use those keys. Make sure the drill for that would be easy. <coughs> easy enough, I should say. One line here. One line this way. 
can put two defensemen if you want. Just a quick thing I'll do here with a shot. On the whistle, <coughs> these guys go this way against two defensemen on this side. So there's a three on two this way, but you get these guys back to So they make sure you go to the middle, make sure they go to the house, and then you make sure that they know what they just did. So you guys understand a little bit what I'm saying? <coughs> Again, here, going quickly. Oh, I don't want your bottle. It'll get you sick. Whatever, clean it. Tools of the trade the first thing that everybody should have in their jacket and pants is a marker. Maybe not this one, this one, and then the big black markers that you have. It doesn't matter what age I use it with my university team, and I use it with my novice team. You have to make sure you have that thing there to say they're going this way. If you want them to go through that cone there, again, the fifth person in line is not going to listen, so you have a, a, an arrow. And all you gotta do is put it on the ice and say, when you get here, I want you to turn this way. Put an arrow on the ice, and they can do it. I'm gonna eat it all as we go. Hoops, rebound boards, cones, tires. I put anything and everything. We did a drill with the Blue Eagles. I brought a couple of garbage, uh, garbage cans on the ice. And all I did was, we were practicing, because defensemen sometimes are not the smartest guys. <laughs> and they would shoot the puck this way, and they always hit the first guy coming through. And what happens there? <coughs> puck goes that way and get three points. So all I did, I had a big garbage can, and as soon as they got the puck here and started rotating, I'd push in front. And they would have to either stop, come this way, shoot beside the garbage can, and try to hit the net on the other side. It was simple as that, taking garbage cans, just the big plastic garbage can, like the green one there, pushing in front of him, trying to make him think of head up, looking, and then shooting beside. So all the little things that you could use to make your team and your practice a little bit more exciting. And as a tip, it helps to impress the parents. A lot of times the kids, the parents are in the crowd and they say, oh, what's he doing there? Or hula hoops, I got my big rebound board, do some stuff. <coughs> a lot of times it's simple stuff, but the parents go up and say, wow, he had rebound boards, he had, I don't know, a big four by four, I don't know what the hell he did with that, but he did it. So it helps in that way too. Technology, <coughs> and this is one I'm going to do. I'm just going to escape from this one, and I'm going to show you this. It's called drill drum. And I think I'm trying to get you to know, don't push the guy into it. I think he's in my ball, my ball. If anybody wants to be head coach or a coach and wants to go start from small levels and go up, I think I uh, know he should have this. <coughs> what happens with this is you get your drills. As soon as you get a drill, you put it in this thing. So it's easy as this. Okay, drill editing. I put a new drill. <coughs> it pops up. You want to add some players. So here, here, here. Uh, you want to put some cones. You can do anything you want this way. You can park your comments. You say what you want. If it's a 2 one one drill, and all of a sudden you put it in your categories. When you get to the category, you get a you get drills from different types of things you're looking for. So again here, if I want to do a practice, and for me this is how I do it, uh, original, and you'll see how many drills that I have. <coughs> I can't get to my one. Now let's say, uh, one 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 drill, uh, one one continuous drill, I insert that into my practice. So I've got all these drills already set up. And from there, all I've got to do is keep going. If I want to do another one-on-one -on -one drill after that, I put the Cantide one here, and insert that one, and I go on, and then on. 
<coughs> until I have my drill. Now, why am I saying this is what, you, what I recommend you guys do? Is it saves time. And again there, I say when you get to practice, you gotta be organized, you gotta be prepared, you gotta be know what you're doing. This is an easy way to do all that. <coughs> it takes you 10, 20 minutes to figure out what you wanna do with practice. After a game, usually you'll know. We'll want to work on one on ones in practice. You go in category one on ones. You look what we want to do. Let's do district. Let's do that. <coughs> okay. You add it to that. All you got to do is print it. Uh, I'm not the, the tech savvy or anything, but I can. I know I can do this. But from here, you can email your assistant coaches, and you can show them what they're going to do before. Or you bring this to the practice, a couple of <coughs> printouts, and you say, your coaches, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to bring. <coughs> but I don't give you a <coughs> page at the start, and that's what it is, it's drill drill. Right? And again there, asset coaches, uh, there's not a lot that are full-time and make money at doing it. <coughs> you guys work. You've got real jobs, and you don't have time to be at the the rink or at my office is actually on the other door here. I've got one there and I've got one at the rink. So all I gotta do all day is practice, make practice, find drills and do stuff like that. For you guys, you have to be organized, you have to put the work in. <coughs> this will make it a lot easier for you. Give me some money. Is there a cost to the software? Yes there is. It's about $150 I think. For one time. One time license. Uh, for, yeah, for the rest of your life. But like I said, I've got drills on there with novice, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. That I use with novice, and I use with our university. <coughs> so I've got all the categories I need. I can go from wherever I want. You print it out, and then you go. And it's easy if I don't like that drill. I just delete that drill, and I'm going to go add another <coughs> Now, I know you guys, a lot of you guys have this, the old pencil still writing, and all of a sudden you have to erase it. And you go, you look in your book, I like this one, I like that one. But with this, I find that you, if you do it right, if you put it in the right category, you don't, you're not going to forget any drills. <coughs> and I was like that <coughs> before. Like, if I work out or do practice, and all of a sudden I get halfway in the year and I say, oh crap, I forgot to do this drill. One drill that I really liked because I forgot it was in the back or somewhere. But with this, you can scroll down, you can look up what you want. And it goes a lot easier. <coughs> hey, Sally, wait, can we share these drills with other people? You can, yes. Uh, the only thing you need is to be friends with somebody. Uh, now, again, you have to be a little bit more tech savvy because I tried to do it with Jeff. And I, I don't know if you need the buffer. You need the Probert or Probert, <coughs> which is a little more expensive. And I think you can do that, but you can share, you can import, uh, export. Um, so I was just like, you can email. Yeah. 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 So other things, we can see about hockey, see about hockey, something I use, we tape the games. After you tape the games, I can cut it up. I can watch different drills. Again, I don't think we'll do it with the novice group, but I do with the university, depends on what you're looking for. <coughs> As coaches, I think you need technology. It's in the game now, it's there. We can use it. You look at di different apps, uh, Charlie team app, one that we use with the group, it's very good. <coughs> we saw it today with the iPad. I actually use Facebook with my Blue Eagles team because they don't answer my emails. But as soon as I post something on the Facebook, I get replies and likes and I don't even know what it means. But uh, they use it, it's there. I'm not saying it should be good for everybody because <coughs> Again, depending on how young the kids are and stuff like that, they will use it. Uh, but for my guys, it does work. You can send the videos if you'd like, you can do all sorts of things like that. Like I said, the team app here, the one we use with Charlie's group. <coughs> Tools of the trade. This is where I, I talked about a little bit a while ago. Be prepared, organize, use your team. As a head coach, one thing that I like to do is I'll make sure my assistant coaches know what they're doing on the ice, especially at practice time, because time is precious. 
So I will be, before practice, it's five minutes, we'll say, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Uh, we wanna do this thing here. Now it's not only which drills that we want is, but the timing of it is. <coughs> After this drill, make sure you fit all the pucks on this side. I'll do water break. It, it's little things, it's a lot of thinking, but you can't imagine how much time that you're gonna save uh, on the ice. One thing I do now, <coughs> and I'm getting to a point that maybe I'm getting complicated, but I try not to move the pucks from different locations as, as less as I can. So if I get the pucks here and here, well, the next drill I do, I'm trying to keep it in the same spot. Then the drill after that, I'll give him a water break. <coughs> then you can move the pucks to where you're supposed to be because the assistant coaches know what they're doing. Now there have to be, you use your team <coughs> because they know what they're doing a little bit too. So you have to use them, you have to make sure that they, not that they feel important, but that they are important, that they can do the job. <coughs> so in my novice team, we'll have uh, uh, four assistant coaches, or four guys on the ice that will help us all the time. So if you want to do groups, if you have four groups or something, each coach has a guy or a group, and I'm able to go around and try to talk and check with the kids and make sure that they're doing what they're doing. Just to have a general idea of how the team is working. By uh, being efficient and a little bit of what we were talking about there. No long line lineups. I think that's what nobody wants to see in hockey and we all didn't realize that. <coughs> and use the ice that's given. Uh, if you get a full ice, I always say that. I don't care if it was uh, initiation last year or novice. Um, me and Mr. Mike there in the corner, we we coach together and I always say, if we have full ice, we're gonna do drills. <coughs> Not necessarily drills, they use the whole ice, but we're gonna do some skating that they have to skate the whole ice. But better is that to learn to skate if you have to go all the way, 200 feet this way, <coughs> that way. I'm not saying it's a race or it's conditioning. <coughs> they can skate, they can use the ice. If you get all that ice there, why don't we use this one? Okay? I'm not saying that there can be drills that are just here, like battle drills and stuff like that. But when it's there, use the ice up there. <coughs> Progressions, drills. Again, there, depending on where, how old the kids are and stuff like that, you have to be aware of how you're teaching a little bit. Uh, I, I had a drill here for the progression where you start one player here. <coughs> now you can use a coach in the middle here and you get the third one. The first drill all you did was to make the pass with one player, you went for a shot. That was done. After a while you add it, you make that pass here. He has to stay on the board. The second kick goes to the middle and it's 2-1-0. <coughs> and then the third is you add the third player <coughs> that goes to the triangle. So there's a progression. You do one drill, one practice, you maybe you add the second type, and then the, the next practice you add that. And you make sure that the kids know, that you see what we're doing. And you see <coughs> the, the drill that we did at the start, and how we add it on. Because they're thinking now. <coughs> They'll know to say, oh yeah, we did that last week. Yep, now we're gonna add to this. The one thing I find that is a lot easier is when we name the drills. If you say the Montreal Canadian drill, if you say the, this is what we're going to do, so it sticks in their mind and they know what they're doing. Because <coughs> you could say here, okay, we're going to do the Mighty Ducks drill. Mighty Ducks, they go there. Okay, now we're going to do Mighty Ducks, but we're going to have this guy. Oh, the Mighty Ducks, and we're going to add this guy. Especially if you got practices with them the whole year, or like we have here, 15, or how many practices we have in the program, <coughs> they can get used to that. Progression in practice, same little idea of where uh, we want to work on some certain stuff. Uh, I don't think it's time to work on the forechecking systems if you're coaching novice, but position, why not? <coughs> One drill that I like, it's kind of a <coughs> drill, you can use any different kind of thing, is if you put, uh, you kind of do the, the cones here, 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 down. Something like that. 
cone there. When you need a bunch of cones or tires or again markers, it's a drill we used to do <coughs> at the university level, but you put your five tires at where they're supposed to be, and you make them do some starts, stop and start. So one guy here doing stop and start, one guy here doing stop and start. Uh, defenseman starts from here, coast is there, this one goes from there to there, and then center main goes from here to here. So we're practicing a little bit of D zone coverage, right? So now they know <coughs> if the puck's over here, or they don't know, but you make them skate like that. And all of a sudden you add my drill, get your back check through the middle, through the dots, <coughs> and then you stop at the hops, but then you start talking to them. Okay, well now, what happens if the puck's here? Where should you, where should you go? You here. Exactly. You're here. So then they, they try to figure out or they get to know <coughs> that positioning in their zone is like that. So you taught them to do this drill. You taught them this drill. Now you're progressing and putting each together. So now they're back checking and being in a defensive position. <coughs> understand a little bit what I'm trying to get with that. Good. I know some kids in our team would never, they just go right through the boards first and <laughs> laugh, but I mean some kids you're going to teach them. And the, the more and more you can get, the more and more you're going to buy you. <coughs> Sorry, Blaine. I have to say, dishwasher takes care of it. <laughs> and there's new ones at the drugstore. <laughs> no, I was just joking. Drills, where to find them, what to do with them, how to modify. <coughs> YouTube is one of the biggest places I take my drills now. It might not sound the best spot, but you can go in there and check uh, Edmonton Oilers training camps, uh, New Jersey Devils training camps, and all of a sudden they're going to show like a 15 minute kind of a drill where they do something. I write it down. Because I do this, and it was my next. It's monkey see, monkey do. That's what coaches do. They find drills, they copy them. Uh, I don't know what Charlie used to coach me. I stole a bunch of their drills. I didn't steal them, kind of borrowed them. <coughs> I, I go at uh, novice uh, practices sometimes, and I see a drill that they're doing, and I'm thinking, wow, oh, that's kind of interesting. <coughs> Write it down. <coughs> Every time I go to another rink, if I go to PEI and there's a practice on the other rink because they have two ice surfaces, I just go there, I sit there before games, <coughs> kind of look at what they're doing. If there's something that interests me. And again, there it's where to find them, what to do with them, and then how to modify. <coughs> and the best example I've got with that is. My assistant coach is Makazo Leblanc. But you know Makazo Leblanc, if not, the other ones are. He's got a little girl who plays Pee Wee Griggin. So he comes to the office one day and he says, Yeah, kind of a weird, weird drill they did today. Two, two players left from here, and they have to play Kipo in this, in this circle. So, okay, two people came from this side, same thing, keep away in this circle. Yeah, then 15, 20 seconds, then they switched. They both went here, they went here, and it was a two on two keep away. So they would have to pass to the ring at line. And after that, on the next whistle, they'd have to go back to this one. <coughs> and then the second one, I forgot, excuse me. On the second whistle, two other girls would start from here and go there. <coughs> so I'm thinking, well, that's not a bad drill. <coughs> And all of a sudden it hits me and I said, well, it makes a lot of sense in a way because we want to protect the puck. It's a good job. But how can we put it in a hockey idea? So where I found it was Makazo. <coughs> what I did with it is I changed it into a hockey drill and modified it. And what we did is we added a net here and a net here and we made a game out of it, a two-on-two -two drill. So they would come here, they battle one on one, protect the puck. 15, 20 seconds, I'd blow the whistle, two on two here, play. And let me tell you, when you play two on two, they want to score, they work hard. 
on the next whistle, I'd make a back check all the way here. And as soon as that whistle went, two other guys went. <coughs> we did it with our novice team, went really well. I did it with my Blue Eagles team. I thought they were going to die after the, the, about 15, 20 minutes. Because, like I said, they work hard here, they have to work hard here, and then they have to back check this way. <coughs> so drills can come from everywhere, and anywhere but it's what you do with them and how to modify. Now what did I do next? I wrote it down in my drill drawer. <coughs> my drill draw so I won't forget it next time. So that's why I always pick on that. <coughs> Questions on that? Game day. Uh, they asked me to talk about game day. And for me, again, novice is, is a little different, I think, from my university. Again, in university, we go there about two hours before game time. We got a meeting. Uh, let's say the game's at 7, you're at 5, meeting 5.30. And then I basically don't do a whole lot until 7 o'clock before the game starts. <coughs> now, for some of you, uh, the, the, where you're going to play uh, is novice, or there's going to be some big games. There's a, a Challenge Cup, is it? What is it? You charge Planet, Cup. Planet, Planet Cup. Cup and all that. <coughs> yeah, I'm not saying I'm not going to be nervous, but for some coaches, you guys might be nervous. And if you go to work and you think about the game all day, it's not going to help you being a coach. So for me, I found myself a routine. What I do before <coughs> home games or, or anything like that, I go to the rink around 4:30. <coughs> I get there, I get my book, and I, I read. I read the uh, novels. John Grisham, stuff like that. I forget hockey for about half hour. I relax. I, I kind of forget everything I'm supposed to be doing about hockey, and I just <coughs> relax. <coughs> we saw Hope be a while ago do some yoga thing. For me, it's reading my book. That was my routine, and I, I relax. And then all of a sudden, when that 5 o'clock comes, comes around, 5.30, then that's where we start. I go back to work. Now, I'm not saying that you have to read a book for your novice game or your Adam game, but find yourself a routine that, again, we, we talked about it, Charlie talked about that, that the coach behind the bench is very important, the way you stand, the way you act. And if, if you're nervous, you're going to say something stupid, or you're going to yell, <coughs> you're going to yell at your referee, which is fun to do. And that's the worst part about Dave, eh? he was a goalie, and he was a referee. Yeah. yeah. That just doesn't make any sense. Right. So your composure behind the bench. So, like I said, kind of routine. For your players, a little bit the same way. <coughs> we, we got the rule that... Here's Here's We got the rule that uh, 10 minutes before the game time, the parents would leave the dressing room. But I think a lot of the teams do that. We started this year, our team, we had the wiffle balls. Because our team did not pass the puck. Now it's novice one. We have some good players that didn't pass the puck. So thank you, how did we do that? I bring in two big waffle balls with the orange, yellow, and I just start walking and I throw the ball. He caught, the kid caught it. Did he pass it back? Kept throwing and doing that. <coughs> not really telling them why. And then all of a sudden, when we started a little meeting, I said, you guys realize what we were doing at the start? Yeah. What? We were passing. <clears throat> oh, yeah. OK. <coughs> so then we, we talked about progression a while ago. So I said, are you guys going to do that on the ice? Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe. They didn't do it on the ice. But well, that's OK. Uh, so next drill, we said, OK, now we, wanna, we want you guys to pass the ball to, be, to, to another partner, to another player. So they would have to pass the ball, and what they had to do first is call out their name. So I would say, go down, and pass. So it, it helped them for the communication, it helped the passing. Uh, so that became our routine before our games, and we started passing the ball. <coughs> and, and to be honest with you, I think it helped a lot, because uh, we had a really good passing team at the end, I'm not saying they passed the ball all the time, <coughs> but it was a lot better. 
Kids to, I got uh, my kid to play the uh, Vipers last year, and their head coach brought them for a run of a half hour before the game. It lasted about 25 minutes. Remember that one, Lane? <laughs> <laughs> so they came to the dressing room and said, I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. <coughs> you, you have to remember who you're coaching for the intensity wise, for what you expect them to do. I agree a lot with what David Game was saying with Hopi. I mean, if you expect your goaltender to do what Hopi does, uh, you're going to be you're not going to be encouraged to see my goal do that for sure. Same reason, it, it explains real well in Charlie's program. We're there for the fun, we're there for the experience. So if you start treating me like NHL players, <coughs> I don't think they'll have any fun there. That's my opinion, I might be wrong, but you got to make sure that you know who you're coaching and who, you, who you're in front of. This is a little bit, I've used this before. <coughs> Life Leadership is an organization that you know, stresses about leadership in business and sports and blah, blah, blah. It's, I find it's really good. They, they, they give DVDs out, talk about different things about leadership. About. They, they do have a religion that I don't really believe in, but it, it's a good, anyway, it's, it's good for that point. <coughs> And this Chris Beatty says, leadership ability is increased but with speaking ability. So how you speak to your, your kids, the way you handle yourself in front of them, it all helps that play. <coughs> how you say something is as important as what you say. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And you use the last word, the last uh, phrase is there. <coughs> I didn't say he stole the money. Okay? But you can say, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole that money. So there's a lot of way that you can say a phrase that has a lot of, a lot of different meaning, right? So especially with the young kids, when you start talking to them out loud or yelling loud or, <coughs> or saying stuff, make sure you think of the way you're going to tell the kid. Uh, take a second, take a breath, uh, be calm about it and talk. We talk about the uh, after games and stuff. <coughs> talk about beating your goaltender, talking to your goaltender. After a bad goal, you, can, you can't say, well, you couldn't stop a beach ball today. But again, what's he going to do? He's not going to make a lot of saves for you the next time. So you have to be smart in the way you say stuff. <coughs> and I'm not saying to analyze everything you say and stuff. But as a person, as a coach, you have that. So we're gonna put you have the you have to you have to be aware of what you're saying and the way you're saying. I can go up to the kid and say, You played a hell of a good game today And all of a sudden the kid's scared to go across to your mom. What do you say? Told me how to get game. Well there's a way to say it, you not to yell at him, right? So and again, I'm not saying yelling once in a while is not good. The way you yell, the way you're saying it, there's, there's always that <coughs> responsibility. That's what the word I was looking for. The responsibility, you have positive feedback. You have to make sure that the kids have this positive experience. <coughs> That's all the program is. We want the kids that are here to keep playing hockey when they're my age. We want them to keep playing hockey when they're older because they love their experience. They want next year to, mom, dad, I want to play with the Vipers again. Okay, we don't want after the year's done to say, oh, I don't want to play Vipers again. I don't want to play Huskies again. It's no fun. Coaches are too tough. All they want to do is win. 
don't get me wrong. I want to win. But you have to make sure that you know where you're, you're aiming and what the goal is for this program and for what you're trying to achieve. And that's to make a positive experience for the kids. And the last one is one I like is, is, is there's no one to quit. One rule that I have with the Blue Eagles is after a loss, we never go in the district. Mike Babcock does that all the time. And something I kind of took out of it. Uh, nothing to be said after a loss that's going to be really important unless you have a really good teaching moment. But if you don't have a teaching moment, <coughs> then you shouldn't go in the dressing room and yell and say something stupid again. And that's a nervous level. I think as a as a novice, as a, you, you can go talk to them, but again, there has to be the, the teaching moment. You have to take the time to calm down, to think of what you're going to say, the way you're going to say it, and be sure that you send the right message. <coughs> uh, one diverb, and again, this is an experience or, that I had this year. I coached my son in Novice 1. We lost against the Mountain Titans, Titans with Luke Bett, and uh, they've got three of good, really, really good players. <coughs> and Betts and Maxwell. Maxwell, they passed the puck. Boom, 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 and scored goals. We, we all lost two games this year. And that was one that we lost 9 to. <coughs> so after the game, I went to the, the, the dressing room and I say, so what, what do we learn? Are they a lot faster than, they, than we are? No. Are they bigger? I don't think so. So I say, why are they so good? Why did they? And then we talked about passing. So I thought that was a good teaching moment to throw to them, look, if we're good at, as good as they are, all we need to do is start passing the puck like they are and we'll be as good as them. And that's when our, our drill again in the dressing room started picking up. We started doing different things and then they came and they figured out what it was for. <coughs> we played that team again in a couple of the tournament and we tied it 3-3. You should have seen the kids how happy they were with a tie. I was very happy. That's good. No one to quit. Uh, probably all of you, I would say, yeah, all of you are fathers that are, their son that are going to play in the game. Yes? On a team, excuse me. You have to know when to be a dad and when to be a hockey coach. <coughs> no one to quit. Because if you start coaching your kid at home or in the drive back, and that's when the kid doesn't have fun. And I'm not saying that if you're watching the Montreal games on Saturday and say, don't do this, don't do that. Or <coughs> I'm talking about the game they just played. Uh, I remember again when I was younger, my dad was a great guy, one of the nicest person in the world. After games, he had the trouble of, of quit, stop. He was, okay, well, if you would have done this, you would have done that. And my mom yelled, it's not me. All right, the game is finished still. We're not. It's on paper. It's not on coach. And it stuck to me. And after that, he kind of, he didn't do it anymore. And again, I'm not saying my dad was bad, <coughs> but we kind of, he, we, we were, he, was our, he was my dad again, not my hockey coach. And then there's a difference in that, right? And that's when you know, have to know as a coach, when to quit being a coach and when to be a dad. And I think that's one of the most important things about the Lakers. <coughs> I shouldn't say by the way, I shouldn't say that. It's not as long as Dave. I'm not sure if I will get paid the same money. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Let's look at questions. Bonus. Anything uh, you guys want to know? No. Sorry about the coffin. Again, I'm trying to get rid of it. <laughs>